Navigating career development can be very, very overwhelming, especially when you're wondering, what should I learn? What should I focus on? Well, in today's video, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is talk about what should I learn? What should I focus on? That can be very overwhelming, especially when it comes to the IT field, because there's definitely a lot to learn. Should you learn absolutely everything and be a master of everything? Well, that would be nice, but that's never going to happen because there's too much to learn. There's so much that you can learn within this field that I feel it's actually impossible to know everything. Now, if you do know everything, that's pretty darn impressive, but we need to be realistic here. You can't learn everything. There's just not enough time for that. So you need to know what to focus on when it comes to career development, or maybe even if you don't have a Linux job just yet, then how do you get one? What should you learn? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. Now, what I could do in this video is I could give you a list of things to learn right now and call it a day, but the problem with that is that that's always changing. If I give you a list of things to learn right now, I mean, if you're watching this video five years from now, is that still going to be relevant? Maybe, but maybe not. So I'm going to refrain from giving you exact things to learn, although I might mention a few things. I feel like I'd be doing you a disservice if I told you what to learn because everyone's career navigation is different. Everybody's career goal is also different. The industry is always changing. So that's not really something that I can do. But what I can do is tell you guys how to find out what you should be learning. And it's actually a lot easier to do than you might think. So what's the secret? How do you know what to focus on? Well, actually, the answer is quite simple. Check job ads. Seriously. The thing is, anytime you look at a job posting, there's going to be a list of skills that that potential employer might want you to know. And that's actually valuable more than just knowing what you need to know for that particular job, but understanding what you should learn in general. So the thing is, even if you're not looking for a job right now, then you can still look at job postings because that information is valuable. What employers are looking for, they post that right in the job boards. So all the information you'll ever want to know about what you should focus on is right there and it's easy to access. So to help explain this, I'm going to walk you through a potential scenario. Maybe you want a Linux job if you don't already have one, and you want to know what you should focus on, what you should learn in order to get that job. One way you can handle this is to look at job postings and then write down the various things that employers are looking for. And then you can adopt a scoring system. So if you have five employers that are looking for Bash, for example, then there's five points because you saw five job ads that are looking for that. If you see something like Python on the list, but you only see maybe two or three employers looking for that, then the score is two or three or however many employers have listed that in their requirements. So if you look at a bunch of job ads and you write down what they're looking for and you score them accordingly, that gives you all the information right there. And the more job ads you look at, the more data that you have to know what you should focus on. Now, before we go any further though, I do need to give you a disclaimer here. Do not, I repeat, do not go to job boards on your company's network. If you work in an office, don't go on your work computer and go to job boards. And if you work from home, don't look at job boards while you're connected to the company network, maybe via VPN or something like that. The thing is, if you are looking at job boards and job postings, that's private, that's personal. You don't want anyone else to know that because you're doing that for you. That isn't for your employer, that's for you. And if you have an employer that makes it a habit of watching traffic that goes through the network, they see you on job boards, they might be under the impression that you are wanting to leave the company. And maybe that's true. Maybe you're not actually fond of where you work and you wanna make a career change, and that's great. But you should still look at job boards in the comfort of your own home in private because that is private and you wouldn't want your current employer, if you have one, to know that that's what you're doing. And even if you're not looking to change jobs, some people will actually look at job boards because they just wanna know what to focus on, not because they wanna change jobs, but they just want to know what to learn. But if you look at job boards at your job, even if you're not planning on leaving that job, they might think you are and that could get a little awkward. And I recommend to make it a habit of looking through job boards at least quarterly. I mean, as a Linux administrator, DevOps person, or whatever your job of choice happens to be, by keeping your eye on the industry and what employers are looking for, then you don't have to worry about your skills becoming stale because you'll know what to focus on. And like I mentioned earlier, you can't learn everything, so you need to know what you actually should focus on 
And there's no better way to do that than to understand what employers are looking for. Another thing that this will help you do is know what to avoid as well. If you look at, I don't know, I'm just gonna make up a number, 30 job ads, and only two of them are looking for a particular thing. Well, as fun as that particular thing might be to learn, it's probably not a good idea right now. It's actually better to look at what the majority of employers are looking for because that can help you actually create your very own learning plan. Your learning plan can consist of all kinds of different things in various subjects. For example, if you have a bunch of employers that are looking for Ansible, then you can write that down as something that you'll want to learn. Maybe Chef, Puppet, there's a number of others in that category. Bash is probably going to be something that the majority will want you to know. But when it all comes down to it, the job ads will tell you everything you need to know to find out what everyone is looking for. Now, another tip that I'm going to give you might sound like I'm being a bit hypocritical, but I promise you I'm not. I actually recommend you pick one thing that is not popular, just one, you know, only one, because you don't wanna to waste too much time with this. But what I'm recommending in particular is choosing a passion project, something that's not for work, it's for you. So something that's your guilty pleasure, it could be something that's not popular at all, but you just love it, you just find that it's a lot of fun and you wanna learn it, then that becomes your rainy day project, something that you can learn in your free time, that you know keeps it fun because if everything is for your employer and nothing is for you, then that can actually burn you out and you don't want that. By picking a passion project that's yours, then you have something to look forward to every day. Now, obviously, if you don't look forward to your job, then there's a problem. You should absolutely love what you're doing. But at the same time, if everything is for your employer, then, well, like I mentioned, you could suffer burnout. Maybe that uh, might make it so that you lose the fun or something like that. But if nothing else, by having a passion project that's yours, you have that thing, you could practice that thing, and that's awesome. And sometimes, a passion project might even turn into a work project. For example, a long time ago, I learned Ansible. And you probably already knew that because I have an entire series about Ansible. It's something that I'm completely obsessed with. When I learned it though, that was my passion project. The employer that I was working for at the time was not using Ansible at all. So I actually used Ansible for, I don't know how long, maybe a couple of years or so. And then one day, my supervisor asked me, do you know Ansible? I'm thinking about having us look into that. It's uh, actually quite popular and I was curious if you knew about it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I know quite a bit about it. I've been using it for a couple of years. So that actually felt pretty good that my passion project became, you know, a work project. But then you have to replace that passion project with something that your job isn't utilizing. Otherwise, you no longer have a passion project. Now, when it comes to passion projects, it could be an open source project that you might want to contribute to. You know, if you have a hobby, like one of mine is retro gaming, for example, so I'm a big fan of RetroPie, and I actually plan on contributing to that project because it's one of my favorites. So that actually gives you practice, if you decide to do this, with contributing to a real project, and that practice can help you at work too, because if you need to submit a pull request, then if you've already done that a number of times, then you know how to do that. But anyway, I get this question a lot when people ask me, how do I know what to learn and what to focus on? So hopefully my tip when it comes to viewing job ads to get that information is helpful. If you did actually find this content helpful, please do me a favor and click that like button. That would really help me out because if enough people click that like button and also share the content, then I'll absolutely consider doing additional videos when it comes to career development. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.